more yeah. myself. Yeah, I like the first person shooter vibes. But hey, we're not done talking about Solid Snake because Dung Jung back to appear. You can see her at the beginning of the block. Now we get to see him again for my mom. Oh, that's so sweet. Cute. Playing for my mom. Go check out my mom's Twitch no, stream. Twitch.tv slash oh, for your Dana's mom. Kitchen. For my mom. I thought <laughs> I thought you said for your never mind. For you mom. But <laughs> no, I'm for, in, it's for my mom. Is it for your mom or is it for Kabasco's it's, it's mom? It's for my mom. Dung Dung Jung is promoting my mom's stream. Check it out. Twitch.tv <laughs> slash Dana's Kitchen. Uh promoting yeah, just so so kind of Dung Jung. Now I'm rooting for Dung Jung. Uh, not to say that I didn't enjoy watching Cabasco last time, played a good set against Wolfie, but uh, against Sonic, didn't get to see a lot of that Robin stuff thrive. So against Snake, slower character, a little easier to lock down. Maybe we'll get to see some of the fun. Yeah, it's going to be a lot slower, which is going to be very beneficial for Cabasco. It felt like against Wolfie, just was getting outpaced and had to really worry about resource management. Okay, we got some basketball trips, tricks with the sword. I like that. I like the way they dribble up and down the court. <laughs> But you do have to worry about the uh, the aerials with snakes, um, grenades. In that case, the trade actually works out for him. Able to still get the stock with the uh, the forward air, but still going to take the damage with the grenade. Sitting at 98%, so do have to be careful if we're using a lot of landing aerials on Snake Shield. He might try to go for that up tilt, which has been the MVP of all of the sets that we've watched, including Snake. Just a really great move and a really big hitbox, so do have to be careful about that. And that's one of the things that I think that we're going to see. Cabasco is probably going to try to play a longer range game because in this matchup, I feel like that really benefits Robin because you can actually get combo starters from a long range. Snake is going to be able to do some chip damage to you, but not really going to be able to do a whole lot else. So Snake is actually going to be the one trying to find his way in to solve the problems that Robin is presenting, right? Mm -hmm. And then to be able to access stuff like that up tilt that you were talking about. But Thus far, that's been tough. That's not exactly the, you know, modus operandi for Dung Jung and this snake. You want to try to lock down a part of the stage, but Cabasco having none of it. Up three stocks to one right now. And in the set that we saw earlier with Dung Jung, he was able to hold on to his stocks for such a long time because we were struggling to find grabs on him, where Cabasco is definitely showing that not having a problem with that, just able to run up, getting a lot of... Um, a lot of grabs and playing very safely around shield. Even trying to use the Nosferatu at 1.2, which can be super beneficial because then you're trading percent. Not a super practical Ooh. option, but if you're sitting in shield a lot, might as well go for it. I love pulling out the store on too, because you're just going to be able to say, hey, even if you want to play that chip damage game across the stage, I, I can lark. I'm, I'm getting a lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. You do have to be careful off stage too, because I feel like Robin's large hitboxes are going to make it a lot harder to uh, to recover, even especially being like very slow as Snake going to die to that C4 there at the ledge. But 71%, this is a decent lead for Cabasco, and only able to rack it up more with these hard hitting 11 aerials. Still have much of the sword left. But again, you got to be careful with them, and you got to watch your back when these explosives come out. Dung Jung sticking to his guns, and it's been working. This game is right back to dead even. And yes, Cabasco is going to have some kill confirms available very, very soon. With Dung Dung sitting at now 99%, you can definitely find something like an arc fire into an up smash. Tried to get the lingering hitbox of the down. Dung Dung still holding on. Okay, up smash. Yep, able to get that confirmed there. And game one going to Cabasco. Arcfire being super um, beneficial as well, just able to get a lot of confirms and follow-ups off of it, and it's a lot of damage too, which is something that we weren't really able to see against Wolfie just because Sonic is able to dash around around it and uh, just not really interact with it. But when you're Snake, you're a tall dude, not a little weasel-looking thing, a hedgehog, that's what he is. Yeah. Hedgehog, that's, you're not a little hedgehog. A Snake is a big man. It How is, it is, is part of his name, too, isn't it? You, you know what? But I don't blame I already you because told you Snake, I didn't is, play the game. <laughs> Snake is not a reptile. So, you True. know, I can see the, the confusion. Names can be misleading. They can Rob be. plays Snake. He doesn't play Rob. That's so true. Can't trust anyone out here. Dung Jung is not a piece of poop. <laughs> <laughs> that is a human being. Cabasco, <laughs> no relation to hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> But a very fun tag to say. It I gotta, really I gotta I say, like Cabasco is a really good tag. I give it like A tier. I, I also give it A tier. It's a fun tag to say. It's very unique. It's got good letters in it. Dung Jung, unfortunately, you I know, would not rate that high. You're, but you're the one who put poop in your name. <laughs> so you, you did it to yourself. 
We're on game two, we're on Hollow Bastion, generally a stage that Snake very much enjoys, and you can already see why, because his control of that center platform is one big aspect of it. His ledge trapping also really gets a boost here because there aren't platforms to escape to, and you can really set up stuff with the mortars, the grenades, whatever you want. Dung Chung doing a really good job of maintaining it. As I say that, no! air dodges off stage, throws away what was a very big lead. That's so unfortunate, especially with so how well the uh, the ledge traps were going for Dung Jung. Typically, when you think about this matchup, I would think that Robin would be the one that has the strong suit. But when you think about it, Robin doesn't have a lot of great tools to get off of the ledge. So if you have those up smashes, if you have the grenades set up there, I don't really know what Robin can do other than try to wait you out. Well, right now, we're going to get to see what Robin does on the offensive, on that ledge trap game, knocking Dung Jung off of that Cypher. Patience here tries to catch that air dodge, but is a little bit too late with that forward smash. So Dung Jung able to find his way back on stage, but at 98%, and again, like you were saying, after building up such a big lead, after playing so well at the start of this game, is now going to be the one to push that boulder up the hill. Do you have to watch out for this Thoron as well if we're able to see an opportunity where Kobasco can confirm into it. Tries to use the arc fire to uh, poke through the shield. Not going to work out though. Do like the attempt, but it does waste a lot of your um, your thunder resources too. So do you have to be careful about that. Mm. Not that Kobasco has been afraid to play this long game, right? To create some distance and wait for those resources to come back. There you see some of the help that you can get around those dangerous ledge traps. Something like that arc fire can take away the options that Dung Jung has to keep you locked down. But now dwindling on resources, how are you going to take advantage of this ledge trap? Because you're about to run out 11 sword. You've only got one of those to throw out to get a landing to happen here. And then after that, you got to go right back to creating some distance. Does have plenty of thunder to work with though, so that's good for Kabasco. All right, again, just playing this really patient game here. Runs on the stage though, but able to get that back throw to send off stage. And Snake is in a lot of trouble here. If Kobasco is able to catch the landing, tries to go for the arc fire instead, but finds that Thoron killing across the stage. Sitting at 107, do have to be careful, but I think just disengaging and going to the other side of the stage might work out. We we talked about it a little bit with like the Toon Link match where we were like, hey, you kind of have to earn that time to throw out your projectiles. You kind of have to make sure that you have that moment. And at Snake, you normally don't have to because Grenade comes out so quick, you can reposition them so quick. But in that case, when Robin has Thoron, you do have to earn that opportunity to pull the Grenade because you can get punished from full stage for pressing the B button. Yeah, for sure. Ooh, okay. I like that using the Arc Thunder on landing instead of an aerial. I mean, it's gonna do just as much shield damage as you need anything else to, right? So, really smart stuff, but Dung Jung still in this one, gets that up tilt, bringing it down to last stock. Obviously not sitting at healthy percents, but given the way that we saw this game start, he could definitely push this Robin into the corner and really start building up that damage. It just has to come on something like a ledge trap. Okay, just sitting here patiently, full charge Thoron, catches with the up air, doesn't kill just yet. Catches the landing again, and yeah, no kill screen on that either. Just kills straight up with the fair. And uh, Kobasco taking that 2-0, despite it being like very much in um, Dung Jung's favor that game two, but just very unfortunate air dodge there, and Kobasco able to uh, capitalize off of it. Yeah, you need to be able to, to, you know, recover from a situation like that, right? Especially playing on stream, right? Get those nerves under control. But Cabasco said, hey, I'm going to take that and run with it. Thank you for the opportunity. Moving on. That was a loser's bracket, too. So Cabasco getting to stay alive in the tournament, I believe, moving on to Sunday bracket as well. So really earning that, getting to showcase some of the Robin. I'm always a fan of getting to see that yeah, personally. For sure. I love all the Fire Emblem characters, but Robin's one of the ones that you don't see a lot of repeat representation from, so I'm very happy to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so really good stuff right there from Cabasco. I'm glad we get to say that tag more. Yeah. Too. Good stuff to Cabasco. Just rolls off the tongue, but we got some other stuff that's going to roll off the tongue for y'all because we have